everybody welcome to another podcast of slow saturday i love saturdays they are my favorite days of the week um we're gonna get some children over today and we're gonna have a nice braai in the afternoon with our kids and our grandkids so i'm looking forward to that but um for the moment i'm home alone my husband has gone off grocery shopping for those of you that don't know my husband loves shopping he believes in retail therapy and i'm never going to tell him that it's actually a lot of hogwash because i hate shopping he loves shopping he's been looking forward to today since wednesday he's saying i can't wait for saturday to go shopping my husband buys everything in the house the only time i get to the shops is for clothing if i need something or and then he has to drag me there and bribe me with breakfast but in general, I don't shop. He's the one that shops. The only shopping I do is yarn shopping. And that I do willingly. So he's off shopping. Even when we had a home full of teenage girls, he would buy everything for them. And I mean everything. He knew the brands. This one wanted that one. This one wanted this one. He buys everything. And I love him for it because I hate the shops. The shops to me are extremely overwhelming and noisy and just not nice okay so the knitting pin saga i've got the knit pro ginger set and i am happy to report that i love them it is exactly what i wanted it's exactly what i needed i love it so let me show you what it looks like i like the case it's a very hard and sturdy case it's um imitation leather it's a very fat case so the needles are really very well protected which i like really much um it's um there's a little bag here on the side for all the cables and i'm not too fond of the cables but they are quite workable. Uh, let me show you. Um, okay, let's take out this one. You will see why they, they do kink a little bit. Um, they do, however, relax quite quickly without soaking them, without heating them or whatever. They do relax quite quickly if you start knitting. They are a lot softer and better than this purple Knit Pro cable. So this is a light brown cable. But it's still a plastic cable but yeah i'm not too fond of them luckily i've ordered knit pro stainless steel cables they actually do have a stainless steel cable with a nylon coating it's not available in south africa yet but i've ordered it and maybe the knit pro importer in south africa will bring it in for you as well but yeah so there's this little uh sachet with the press stitch for the cables that's on the one lip then this is what the needles look like and there's also a pen included in the set a very nice heavy um very good quality pen i'm busy with one pair of needles um the needles are hardwood and they are extremely smooth very very smooth it's an absolute pleasure to knit with them but they just have enough surface drag just just enough to make my knitting tension absolutely marvelous i love them i really do now this set starts at a three and a half and then it goes to a four four and a half five five and a half six seven eight nine ten twelve so i've also ordered extra a three millimeter a 3.25 and a 3.75 because those are sizes that I use quite often so they will also come along with the uh, stainless steel cables and then this is a feature that I probably won't use very much uh, because I'm designing I don't work off patterns but there's a built-in board here with um, uh, magnets that you can use to uh, clamp a pattern with and these little um, loops then connect to these wooden buttons on this side so that you can have um, a little stand here like this 
so it will stand on the table like that and your pattern will be standing and you can easily see what you're doing I really love this set I'm glad I pushed through and sold the lantern moons as well Luckily, I found a buyer for them, so I'm very blessed in that regard. So I'm very, very happy with the Knit Pro Ginger set. I'm so happy with the Knit Pro Ginger set that I am dead set on buying the double pointed needle set as well. I like knitting um, sleeves and that on double pointed needles, so I'm going to buy that. And in the long run, I'm also going to buy me the Knit Pro Ginger Tunisian set. I want it. It's not so much that I need it, I want it. I like using the Tunisian needles with the cables to pick up stitches for around the neck or something like that. So I'm dead set on buying those two sets of the Knit Pro Ginger as well. Now I purchased, I purchased, I purchased this from Jan at, um, from Jan, from Bren at Jan. And um, yeah, I'm very, very happy. So if you're in the market for a new set and you don't like steel like me, um, this is a good option. The Chagu Forte is absolutely the Royals Royce of everything, but I can't work with the steel tips. And for 6,000 Rand, I can buy this set plus the double pointed needle set plus the Tunisian needle set all for 6,000 Rand. So money wise, this, in my opinion, is a better option, but if you can afford Chagu Fortes, go for it. Okay. Um, I am on a drive, starting this week, to really get my act together and start sharing. I'm very lazy with social media. I haven't blocked in months, and... Uh, you know, I really, really need to get it going. So I'm working on my time management. I'm busy putting a little schedule together. So you can look forward to some new things coming out from me. I am just have to do it. I have to blog more regularly. So I will be blogging weekly to tell you what my week is going to look like in photos, in yarn. What am I planning for this specific week ahead? And... Um, you will also see that my podcast video is a little bit more organized. I'm trying to get there and trying to channel all my creativity into a, a manageable direction because I tend to be all over the place, you know, squirrel syndrome very much. Okay, so let's look at designs in progress. I don't have whips. I have dips. Designs in progress. I am still working on the Henley. I have not finished the Henley, although I'm very close. I'm going to finish it either today or tomorrow. Um, okay, so Abigail's Henley is still here. I haven't even um, bought the mustard yarn yet. I'm going to do that as soon as the video is finished because that's what I want in it today is the sleeves to Abigail's Henley. And then I want to wash it and take some nice photos. So this is Abigail's little Henley. And she's got the ribbing at the bottom. I've given two options in the pattern. The one is for a ribbing. And the other one is for um, a turnover hem. Let me show you. Where is my Henley? Okay, here's my Henley. I'm on the second sleeve at the moment. So it's nearly there. Now, this, this project... The color, really, I really set myself up for a huge mess in this one. I just had to adapt and change and adapt and change. And the end result is I love it. I can't wait to wear it, but it wasn't what I was planning. I was planning on stripes. But the mohair that I added in with the merino seriously messed up the stripes and it messed up the contrast between the stripes and I couldn't use the one color and even between the last two there's so little contrast. But regardless of all of that, I love the Henley. So here's my Henley. There are some stripes but they're not the way I, in, I envisioned them in the beginning but I love it nevertheless. So this is the... Um, let me show you like this. This is the um, turnover seam. It's um, there's a 
tiny, tiny scalloped round that I created with the pull row to make the fold easier. And then the sleeve is turned to the inside and casted off and sewed together all at the same time. And I've got the same thing at the bottom. And that is because I do not like a ribbing for myself. And that is, um, so you will see it hasn't been washed, it hasn't been blocked, but the seam is very neat, very nice. Um, I'm not too fond of a ribbing on the bottom of a garment because <clears throat> it, I find it tucks over my butt and it, I, I feel like a toffee apple <laughs> on a stack. <clears throat> so yeah, the Henley is due to be finished today. The sleeve is nearly done. Um, it, it, yeah, I'm about halfway with the second sleeve. Luckily, I don't suffer from second sleeve syndrome too much. I'm quick with sleeves normally. And... Um, I will finish it either today or tomorrow. So the Henley is nearly there. It should the pattern should be available in a week or two. Okay, so that one is still with me. And the only other design that I'm working on at the moment is the lock cabin patches crochet. But I've I've really um, I'm angry with myself in a way. But yeah, you know. Um, I started crocheting this with a four millimeter hook and after a couple of locks I wasn't too happy with the feel of the blanket but I didn't want to change anything at that stage so I just continued and now it's got to a point where it really irritates me and I don't like it because it feels a little bit too loose to me. So I'm going to redo this entire thing with the three and a half now. Anyway. Okay, this is the baby size. It's not been blocked. It's all over the place. Uh, here you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. It's, it's a patchwork blanket, but it's crocheted in a log cabin fashion. So... I'm starting on Monday with a three and a half millimeter hook and I'm going to redo it because I want a sturdier finish for a blanket. It's going to, it's going to feel better, it's going to last longer, it's going to sit better. So, Okay, so those are the only two designs that are actually in progress, which is amazing that I'm only working on two. It's the Henley in the knitting and the Lock Cabin Patches in the crochet. Okay, so... What is in the project pipeline? The project pipeline has grown massively. And I have yarn right here for four sweaters that I still want to make this winter. Before the end of August, I want to make myself four more sweaters to wear now the ones yarn i've misplaced somewhere or half of the yarn i don't know what i did with it i wonder if i haven't left it in the color spawn studio but i'll find it okay so this is a beautiful gray it's called nimbus cloud this is a merino double knit from donna and i actually want to pair this with mohair and I had the mohair, but I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> I can't find it. Okay, so this one is going to be the next one. And the design that I'm going to do was requested by two of my besties, my testers, Alta and Michelle. So they've requested a V-neck raglan with minimal cable detail down the raglan stripes and underneath the arms on the side, but minimal. So this one will be cast on probably Monday, Tuesday somewhere. This is now the next one. And this is going to be, well, that is now if I can find the damn mohair. Otherwise, I'll have to use a different one. Hmm. Trouble in paradise. But anyway, I'll sort that out just now. I'll find it must be somewhere I really need a bigger house this little townhouse that we're in at the moment there's no space there's yarn everywhere if you look around my sitting room it's just yarn it's terrible okay then I have when I did um, let's talk purple I used the cotton Erin with the mohair 
cherry red. The name is cherry. Oh, fresh cherries. Sorry, fresh cherries. I want to pair these two up and I want to make myself another one. I love the feeling of the cotton aaron and you can see it's a thick, rather textured cotton. But paired with the mohair, oh, it becomes so luxurious. And that purple one, I've actually washed it yesterday. It washed so beautifully and so easily. So I'm definitely going to make myself another something. I don't know what yet. I've, I've got the yarn, but I haven't got a picture yet. Then I've got um, some bright turquoise um, mohair. And this I want to use double strand to make this thin, wispy, candy floss like little sweater. But that's all I know so far. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what the neck is going to be like. I don't know anything. It will come to me. The other one that I'm really um, set on that I know what I want to do is this one. It's a beautiful emerald. This is also... Um, merino double knit and with this one I want to make a totally different design I want to make a sweater with that block um, neck with the rolled collar that folds over I've been talking about it for a while but I want cables here on the one side going over the shoulder down the back so a, a big fat cable pattern going over and the rest of the jersey is just plain stocking stitch so that is the project pipeline. One, two, three, four sweaters still before the end of the year. Before the end of the winter in South Africa, which is actually end of August, I still want to knit four sweaters. That's my project pipeline. And then obviously I'm still busy with the, um, the tutorial for the masterclass for knitting in the round. I'm not finished with that yet. I need tools. I'm waiting for the double pointed needles. Yes. Okay, so that is the project pipeline. I've got lots planned and I hope I can finish it all, but I'm looking forward to each one. It's such fun to knit sweaters for myself again. I'm really, really enjoying it at the moment. So that's the project pipeline. Okay. Last week I said to you that if you want to ask me a question, you can do so and I will attempt to answer the question in the video. So let's do a question and answer. Today's question comes from Rihanna Pretorius. She lives in Marlof Park and she says, How do I determine how much yarn I will need if the pattern has short sleeves and I want to make long sleeves the thumbs up <laughs> um, part of my autism struggles is the utter lack of ability to estimate anything I cannot estimate time I cannot estimate distance I cannot estimate volume and I cannot estimate yarn usage <laughs> what I've started to do I've um, I started a spreadsheet and in the spreadsheet I list my projects with the specific yarn I'm using and more or less what this thing looks like long sleeves long body whatever and I put my yarn usage in there so that I can go back and more or less see what has happened in the past that will help me make better decisions now. You can obviously swatch and weigh and do a little bit of math and see if you can more or less work out the area surface um, of the sleeve and compare it to the swatch but that sounds like a hell of a lot of work. I would rather just buy two or three extra balls of yarn and whatever is left I will make something with for the grandchildren. So. I don't think I can give you a very good answer on that. I am sorry. And then she also sent a second question and she said, as a beginner knitter, I'm never sure which natural yarn to use for a summer top. I think cotton, but I've heard merino. Okay. Cotton is a very good option for summer. 
but merino is also a very good option for summer. The reason being, because merino is an animal fiber, it regulates your body temperature. Now obviously I wouldn't go knitting a summer top with bulky merino, that's not going to work well. But fingering merino is wonderful for summer tops and I have quite a few of those. That is actually my favorite yarn to knit with in summertime is fingering weight merino. I'm not fond of knitting with cotton. I do, I have cotton tops, but I love knitting with merino. Merino is just, it's just my favorite fiber to work with. So merino fingering weight, really good option for the summer, but yes, cotton as well. Okay, so that's the question and answer. So if you have a question that you would like me to answer, whether it's related to knitting or crochet or how I design and what I'll do, ask away. Maybe I can answer it for you. Who knows? Okay, so um, another new thing this week is amusing. Not amusing like funny, amusing, like um, sharing my musings with you, yes, yes. And you know this Rebel Henley, I spoke to you about it and I told you why I'm designing it the way I am, I'm actually rebelling against everything that I was brought up with. And I'm still on that pathway. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit a matching hat for that Henley. I am. I remember as a young girl, I used to buy just a little bit more yarn than what I need for a sweater. And then I would make a matching hat. I loved wearing sweaters with matching hats. I love a hat. And it really, really... Um, irritated the shits out of my mother. I can remember she would look at me and says, oh, you look so queer. You know, I love hats. And this week, while I was sitting, mulling around this whole rebel Henley in my head, I thought, you know what, this thing needs a matching hat. And I'm going to do just that. So what is the musing all about? What hang-ups have you got that you carry around because of things people have said or done and actually it doesn't serve you? Why are we keeping those? I don't know. I've just decided that if something, a principle or a method or a technique or whatever, if it doesn't serve me, then I chuck it out. I will do what I want to do and I will enjoy doing it because life is too short. That is the bottom line. Life is too short. So I'm going to be making matching hats for my sweaters and stuff the rest. My children's father has a saying, he says stuff the people, we are the people. But he doesn't use the word stuff, obviously. And that's what I feel like. Stuff the people, we are the people. We can knit what we want, we can wear what we want, we can crochet what we want, we can wear colors that we want, styles that we want, why not? So there's the musing for you. That's what I've been mulling on this entire week. What hang-ups have you got that has been placed on you, dumped on you, forced on you, drilled into you that doesn't serve you? Why are you keeping them? Join me. Start rebelling. <laughs> I am rebelling. That is it. Okay. Now the last bit of the podcast. I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, making, making a living in yarn is difficult. 
It doesn't matter whether you're a designer, whether you are an indie dyer, whether you are a yarn shop owner, it is difficult. And I've decided to give um, exposure and airtime to other people in the yarn business. If we share our, um, if I share somebody else with you, my audience, and maybe I can up her business in some way. Maybe I can help grow something. I don't know. But that's my heart. I just want to give exposure to people and to say, <clears throat> you know what? All my solo life followers, yes, somebody else. This is what she looks like. This is what she sounds like. This is who she is. This is what she does. And maybe we can help each other grow our businesses so that we can survive these tough and trying times. Because let's face it, the world at the moment, economically, it's hard. It's hard everywhere. Um, in South Africa particularly, it's hard because the exchange rates are very much against us. And um, yeah, trying to make a living just by selling patents is, is hard. But indie dyers have it just as hard. There's a huge, um, there's a lot of indie dyers in the world and the competition is fierce and it doesn't matter. Um, I just want to give some airtime. So at the end of my weekly Slow Saturday podcast, I will be including an interview with somebody that I've had. And this week I've chosen Donna Biddle from Color Spun because that's the yarn that I work with the most. So um, I'm first going to interview all the people close to me that I work with, that I've got um, good working relationships with. And then I will um, branch out and find other designers and other yarn shop owners and other indie dyes that maybe I don't know. I will get to know them. You will get to know them. And our world just opens up and we have more choice and more people. And yeah, let's just enlarge our community. So... Um, I've called it Meet the Face Behind the Name. And our first guest is Donna Biddle from Colorspun. So enjoy the interview. Okay, okay, so today my guest in the studio is Donna Biddle from Colorspun. And I'm going to ask her some questions to find out more about her and about her yarn. So Donna, what made you decide to become an indie dyer? Hilda, it was quite a long time ago. I had started knitting again and couldn't find yarn or colors that I liked here. And I was on a trip to the UK and I went to a show and found some really stunning yarn. And the lady there said to me that it was from where I came from. She thought I was Australian. Um, no, that it wasn't where I came from. Anyhow, it turned out the yarn was from here, from South Africa. So when I got back, I put a friend in the car and went on a trip around the country to find all this lovely yarn. And another friend of mine said that she could teach me how to dye it. So that's where it all started. So that trip around the country trying to hunt for the yarn, is that the trip that gave birth to the knitting book that you published? Yes, it did. Yeah, it was, it was one of three trips in the end. Um, yeah, my long-suffering friend Nadia went with me on all of them. We had great fun. And why was there never a second book? Hilda, I don't know if I've got another book in me. I mean, in those days, the internet was still very young. So, you know... Everything was still on paper. Um, yeah, you never know one day, but right now, no, I'm still not going to do another book. <laughs> I found that the books is a lot of work for very little return on investment. Did you find the same? Absolutely, no. yeah. Okay, so how long have I you been dying? Die. Pardon, sorry. How long have you been um, in the indie dying now? Um, since about 1998. Wow. Yeah, that's a nice long time, eh? Uh, yeah. 
what's it, 24 years. <laughs> how many yeah, colors do you dye? How many thing. colors? How many colors do you we, have in your standard range? In the standard range now, 470. Wow. Which include white, which I don't dye personally. I have them dyed for me because I can't get the heat high enough yeah. as an indie dye. Um, yeah, 470 colors, but pretty much an infinite number because if anybody wants the color that's not the we do our best to do it for them. Some so of those get added to the range, some of them don't. And then of course there's all the multicolors as well that are all unique. So you're still taking in custom dye jobs for somebody that wants something specific? Always. That's the fun. Okay. That's the real yeah. Now what's the weirdest thing you've ever been asked to dye? Well, I have spent the last week looking for some dyes that I know I had and I couldn't find. And then um, yesterday, I suddenly remembered what had happened to them. We've actually used them. They are called dispersed dyes, and they are for dyeing synthetics, which, as you know, I don't really do. And my hairdresser had asked me to dye some synthetic dreadlocks so we use those down and that, <laughs> that so it works be the weirdest thing i've done yeah <laughs> and did it work it did yes amazing yeah. and it, for the dice for my interesser <laughs> <laughs> that's quite interesting okay so if you craft now You've mentioned that you knit. What other crafts, yarn-wise, are you involved in? Oh, there's a, there's so many. I knit, I crochet. Um, I do a bit of weaving. As you know, I love to spin. Um, there's punch needle embroidery. There's normal embroidery with yarn. Um, felting. Which one is the favorite? What? Um, it varies at the moment between knitting and crochet. I think those will always be the favorite. Mm. The other I do enjoy as well, but they sideline things. Okay, so of all the yarn bases that you color, which one is your personal favorite to work with? Um, that also varies depending on whether I'm knitting or crocheting. Okay. Um, between the cotton and the merino, I like to knit merino. Mm. Um, about to start knitting a whole lot of cotton um, garments, which I've pulled the cotton out for and I keep looking at it. Um, there are a whole lot of new designs that are coming up oh, one of these years. Um, yeah. Oh, that and was my next question, whether you still design and publish do you still design patterns and publish them yes i do not not as many as i did before um i'm far busier now with the dyeing mm. than with fitting when i worked for the magazine i had deadlines so um yeah things had to get done now i'm on my own time so definitely things are going slower but Um, finding the right testers. When I worked for the magazine, they had the testers who did all the testing. I never had to worry about that, and now I do. Anyhow, I've got one or two good ones, and yeah, we're about to get cracking. I'm looking forward to that. That sounds interesting. Now, how often do you just walk up to all those shelves filled with yarn and just help yourself to something? Oh, pretty much every day. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I need something. As you know, Hilda, in my little hidey hole, I have a whole stash. <laughs> uh, it doesn't often come out. 
Um, I help myself. It's so great to have a shop on hand. I can shop it. I'm a luck. <laughs> I I know I was like that when I had Jan and Yvonne and I really miss having all the shelves to my disposal where I can just walk in and take something my husband always said you're knitting away all your profit <laughs> yeah, same story <laughs> <laughs> okay is there anything um, at Colorspun that we can look forward to in the next couple of months something exciting that's going to happen Um, well, we're having a few new workshops that will happen in the next couple of months. Um, you're coming to visit again soon. I know that was very exciting. Everybody really enjoyed that. Um, we've got some new patterns happening. Yeah. Great. Quite a lot. And we've got a few new multicolor ideas as well for the multicolored yarn. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope you have a nice slow Saturday as well. Mine is certainly going to be slow. I hope yours is going to be slow as well. I'm off to the market to go and have lunch with a couple of friends. So, yeah, it's going to be a good slow Saturday. Great stuff. Thanks, Donna. All the best. Thanks, Hilda. Speak to you again soon. Thanks. Lots of love to Button. same to you bye i hope you enjoyed that i hope it um, gave you a little bit of inspiration i will give you all of donna's contact details in the comments and if you have a question for me that you want me to answer next week drop it for me in the comments wherever you see this video and remember to subscribe subscribe to the video so that i can grow and um I'll see you in the rest of the week. I hope you have a splendid slow Saturday and I hope your weekend is absolutely amazing. Now grab the yarn, grab the needles, grab the hooks. Let's craft away and have a slow Saturday.